Well, folks, it finally happened. Razorback football coach Sam Pittman gets his contract figured out, finalized, signed, however you want to look at it. And it's about time that it happened. Also, Razorback baseball getting ready for the regional here in Oklahoma State, Stillwater. And we're going to have a little bit of breakdown. Got to check out some practice and some fun stuff coming from that. And, of course, it's good to be back from vacation and to be with all of you once again. But, hey, that's what happens here on the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 1037 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful Thursday as it's been quite a few days since I've been able to do the podcast. Been on vacation uh, down in Destin. And I found out yesterday that as I was about to drive back from Destin, that I was going to Stillwater and I had to be there this morning early to go and practices and all those things too. So it's just part of the job. It's part of the fun, but it's good to be with you. It's good to be back into the swing of things and good to be here in the fine city of Stillwater and getting ready for that. But we'll talk about that in a bit because uh, the big news coming out today that so many Razorback fans ha have been wanting to hear more about and uh, been waiting really for months, it seems like, uh, at this point in time for it to get finalized was Sam Pittman's new contract. And, you know, it's funny because we all kind of had an idea of, you know, what the what the contract actually meant, and you know who was who who was de doing the dealings when it came to, you know, finalizing it and all that stuff too. Jimmy Sexton doing Jimmy Sexton things, just how it goes. But either way, it, it's officially signed, and we have a few details on it. I'm sure more details will come out from it as time goes on. But as of right now, he has signed a contract extension through at least 2026 that will pay him five million dollars per year with escalators based on performance. Pittman's new salary is a 66.7% increase from the $3 million he was in line to be paid for before bonuses in 2021 when he led Arkansas to a 9-4 record and a 24-10 victory over Penn State in the Outback Bowl. This is all according to Matt Jones of Hoalicsports.com. Pittman could earn a pay raise up to $750,000 for a nine-win season under his new contract. Arkansas finished last season ranked 21st in the Associated Press Razorback's first time to be included in the AP poll in 10 years, final AP poll. Pittman received votes for AP National Coach of the Year last season, but was named Regional Coach of the Year by American Football Association, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Arkansas is where I want to be. This is my dream job, Pittman said in the UA release. I am so grateful for the opportunity and to be, or so grateful for our, you know, our university and Hunter believing in me and coaches and staff in our program that we're building. We're all excited to continue to build on, on the program and continue to make our fans and the whole state of Arkansas proud of our football team. According to the terms in the original contract, Pittman was in line to receive $750,000 pay raise for winning eight regular season games in 2021. Late last year, he hired a new agent, Jimmy Sexton, who proposed a much larger salary worth around $50 million over seven years. That was what the Arkansas Democrat Gazette reported. Pittman is in line to be the highest paid employee in UA athletics history. He previously had the second highest UA salary behind men's basketball coach Eric, Sol uh, Eric Musselman, uh, who received a pay raise for $4 million a year. Pittman's new salary is believed to... This is so crazy. Pittman's new salary is believed to be ranked ninth among SEC head coaches. According to an, anal an analysis of public available contracts, Nick Saban is the league's highest paid coach at $9.5 million, followed by Jimbo Fisher and Brian Kelly at $9 million apiece. Uh, Georgia's coach Kirby Smart is in currently uh, negotiating his contract. Ford hired Billy Napier at $7.1 million. Ole Miss raised Lane Kiffin's salary to $7 million. Brian Harson's making $5 million, $5.1 million. Uh, New Oklahoma coach Brent Venables is hired at $7 million. C. Starkeesian's making $5.4 million. Pittman's $3, $3 million salary was ranked 12th among 13 coaches at public universities in the SEC. Only Shane Beamer was making less. Uh, see, in, in addition to Pittman, Arkansas has made two assistant coaches. Uh, cumulative pay there has increased by 20.9%, $6.44 million since the end of last season. Uh, let's see. If Pittman is fired for convenience, he would be owed 75% of the remaining funds on his contract uh, if the Razorbacks have won half or more of the regular season games beginning in the 2021 year. The total owed to Pittman would fall to 50%, 
beginning with the 2021 season, and he had a losing record at the time, he is fired. So that's just kind of a, a we'll dive into what the contract was about and, and some of the stuff we've been hearing. And again, things may change, and we may hear more details as it comes out. But essentially, Pittman's making $5 million a year, which I think that if you remember when we talked about it on this podcast before, when it, the, the report was that he wanted $7 million, kind of all felt like it was going to be probably around $5 million was going to be the reality. And lo and behold, guess what? That's what it was. So $5 million for Sam Pittman, great incentives, uh, not an insane buyout, which we know Hunter Yurchek feels very strongly about these buyouts and how it should be approached and how it should be handled and all those things. All of this is phenomenal. Like this is exactly how it needed to go. I'm always going to be curious about the timeline of it all um, because it seems like a lot of these contracts get figured out pretty quickly. And it only makes me think that maybe there were some hangups maybe with Jimmy Sexton and Juracek, or maybe there were some other fine little details needed to be ironed out. Whatever it is, it's done. It's finalized. Sam Pittman's going to be in here for the long haul. This is still going to be his last college football job. Uh, I think he said that, and I think we all know that, and it's great. It's awesome. But here's the thing that I want to reiterate this point to all of you who see this money or see this contract negotiations or, or see anything about what Sam Pittman is making, whatever, whatever you want to think about it. Here is the cold, hard reality. And I said it once, and I'll say it again. It does not matter how much a coach makes. Sam Pittman making $5 million a year does not matter. Doesn't matter to you. Doesn't matter to me. My life is not going to change one iota if Sam Pittman makes $5 million or $10 million. Neither is your life. It's not like they're taxing the state of Arkansas to say, all right, well, we got to get Sam Pittman a new contract, so we're, we're hiking up the alcohol tax to bring in some extra money for him. No, <laughs> it's not that. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what a coach makes. Now, the buyout has been a little bit more important, but as we've seen with Hunter Yurchek and Sam Pittman and all that, the buyout is not a problem. It's actually handled in the way of what a contract should be. It should be this way. So all these things looking at it from all different directions. It doesn't matter how much he makes. What matters is what he does. And if Sam Pittman is able to continue to win and continue to build the program, then at the end of the day, that's what people are going to care about. But if he doesn't win, if he doesn't build the program, if they start having problems, the people are going to want him fired. It's as simple as that. And so the fact that you have a coach that's making $5 million a year and is still like ninth in the SEC at this point in time, shows you how competitive and how highly valuable SEC football is and how much money that so many of these schools have. But it also has shown and proven so many times in previous years that coaches who have got big-time contracts, big-time salaries, doesn't always equate to high-level success. Somebody's got to finish last. Somebody's got to be last in this whole thing. And, you know, you think about, like, just the ridiculous contracts like, you know, Mel Tucker getting like $9 million up at Michigan State. Excuse me? Seriously? Like you saw that and it just blows your mind. You saw what James Franklin got. It's like, what the crap? Who's paying these people? And then we start seeing those figures. You're like, wow, look at this. This is insane. Even here in the SEC, Jimbo's the second highest paid coach. And like he had one good year so far. That's it. Like one good year. But it's about winning and losing. And, and I think that with what Pippen's building, I still believe it is a stronger foundation of a program than what some, maybe some other coaches are doing. I think that there's other coaches in this conference that even though they may have had success or look to have success, I don't think it's sustainable. I think the NIL has changed a lot of things and has impacted a lot of you know, how rosters are handled and how Programs are handling their their players and everything. I, I think there's a lot of that to it. But I just think that this is about right for Sam Pittman. And he's always been someone who's not been very greedy. He hasn't been somebody that's, you know, looking for his next big step and next, you know, next shot at going somewhere else besides Arkansas. He's not looking for that. But I think he also understands that he wants to be compensated and 
wants to show that this place is where he wants to be. And this is how much money he is making. And he ain't going anywhere. And he wants to be respected in that way, which he's earned that. He's earned that. I mean, the turnaround he has done in Razorback football might be one of the most incredible turnarounds in Razorback sports history. And like for anybody, I challenge anybody to let me know of what would be a greater turnaround. I guess I saw somebody bring up like nut in 98. I was like, no, that wasn't a turnaround. Like they they went to an SEC championship game just three years prior. That's not a turnaround. Like that, this was a turnaround from the Chad Moore Sam Pittman. That was a turnaround. That was insane how they were able to do that. So all those things involved, it's like you see the direction, you see the money, you see all that. I'm just glad it's done. And I'm glad Sam Pittman is the head coach of Arkansas. I'm glad he's somebody that a lot of fans can relate to and be able to feel comfortable with and, and, and all those things. This is the right move for everybody involved. And so congratulations, Sam Pittman. You got paid. I wish I was making that type of money <laughs> myself. Would be nice, but definitely not doing that. And that's okay. But uh, maybe one day in radio, I'll be able to get to that point point, be able to have Jimmy Sexton as my agent because that seems to be one of the biggest keys in all of this too. Folks, you tell me about Built Bar, and uh, they have now these new things called Built Granola Bars. Built Granola Bars come in three unbelievable flavors between chocolate peanut butter, chocolate coconut, and white chocolate berry. And you can try all three flavors because you can get a mixed box at Built.com right now. They're also so different from the bars and also the puffs. Can't forget those. Built Granola Bars are loaded with granola. It's a perfect combination of crunch and chewiness. And it's just like the bars and puffs, with the ba with uh, these babies are packed with protein and covered in 100% chocolate, only 150 calories, 15 grams of protein. That's the way to do it. So they're going out. They're getting crazy. They're getting granola bars. The Built Bars were incredible. The Puff Bars were incredible. These things will be incredible as well. And right now, if you go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15, you'll get 15% off your next order. It's as simple as that. doesn't matter how many you buy. doesn't matter how many you just stuff in your mouth. doesn't even matter how many you store. Whatever it is, 15% off at Built.com using promo code Locked On. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so the Razorback baseball team is here in Stillwater. Uh, as they were officially, it was officially announced that they would be heading to this regional, uh, a place that they, I'm not going to say they're used to, but they have played here before, back in 2015 in a regional where um, uh, I guess that, you know, that was a crazy series and, and crazy year because Arkansas really that year was with the Andrew Benatendi year. And it was like just, Arkansas wasn't a great baseball team that they had really one great player and they just got some really good matchups. And I mean, I'm not taking anything away from them, but that was just a crazy year altogether. And now Arkansas is back in there and they're going to be facing off against Grand Canyon as Arkansas is a two seed, Grand Canyon is a three seed. And then uh, Oklahoma State's course, the one seed, and they'll be facing Missouri State, the four seed. Missouri State, Arkansas has already faced this year. Uh, there's some familiarity between these programs as well. And so, and this is what's crazy is that this is the first time Arkansas has been on the road for an NCAA regional since 2015 when Arkansas beat Oklahoma State in that one as well. It's going to be a noon first pitch on Friday. So uh, the winner of this one will play the winner of the Chapel Hill Regional, uh, which, of course, has North Carolina, Georgia, VCU, and Hofstra. And if Georgia is able to win that or VCU or Hofstra, any of those two, three, four seeds win that and Arkansas wins this one, Arkansas will get the super regional host. So that'll be uh, that'll be pretty important and pretty big if they're able to pull that off. But uh, I hope that's the case. We just got to root for Georgia to come through in the clutch and to make that possible. But Arkansas is playing here. And Arkansas, we know that they didn't do very well in the SEC tournament. We know that uh, they didn't do very well at the end of the regular season. We know that there are uh, some issues surrounding this, this team and everything, which we'll talk about a little bit and we'll dive too much into it. But there's just been some weird things. But I'm telling you, I went to practice today and, and saw the team and got to hear from Coach Van Horn and got to hear from Connor Nolan as well as Caden Wallace, guys that have been on the program and with the program for a while now. And, and again, again, take it for what it's worth. But this team just looks like they're really pissed off. 
They look like a team that's really upset the fact that everyone's doubting them. Everyone's been putting them down. No one has any faith in them. You know, whatever. They 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 want to be out for blood and they want to change the narrative. They want to change the the or flip the script, if you will, about what they've been as a baseball team, especially here over the past couple of months. I, th I think they're sick and tired of hearing about how things didn't go their way. How are they motivated? I think they got a chip on their shoulder. I think that they have uh, a lot of elements to their own uh, play and how they play and how they approach the game that's going to be in full scale here in this series and in this regional. Now, I never want to put a guarantees because we know that Razorback baseball has been pretty inconsistent this year. I mean, I, in fact, I would even say that if you told me that Arkansas goes 0-2 in barbecue in this regional, I wouldn't be surprised. But if Arkansas goes 3-0, and wins the series, and moves on to the Super Regional, I wouldn't be surprised by that either. It's just a very inconsistent feeling and a very weird feeling of trying to figure this team out, which you know might, might, might be impossible. But still, um, I believe that Arkansas will win this regional. Like if you wanted me to put my prediction on it, if you wanted me to to discuss about you know where my head's at on everything, I believe Arkansas wins this regional. It's not going to be easy. They don't win it going away. In fact, I think that they win it by still losing a game, but they do enough to win and they move on. And I'll even go further and say that they host the Super Regional in Fayetteville next weekend because I think that George is going to win that uh regional over north carolina and you know we're getting ahead of ourselves because we're on my next week and you gotta get through this weekend but i just believe arkansas is going to win i believe arkansas is a team that is going to be extra motivated they've had a lot of time to rest you know since they went zero and two down in hoover they've had pretty almost a week really to rest and get ready for this uh their backs are against the wall the pressure is on oklahoma state and i think you're going to see an extremely motivated team led by a coach who's been there before Many a times where the team has been put down, people didn't believe in them, they flipped the script, they got it going, and they made it happen. And I think that's what's going to happen in this series too. So I can't wait. I can't wait till it all goes down tomorrow. Um, and I think Arkansas takes care of business against Grand Canyon and should make it pretty interesting for the weekend as well. And everybody that's coming over here, please be careful and please be safe. And uh, always check where you're staying too because I've heard horror stories about Stillwater and some of the things that they have going on here with the hotels as well. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news, and odds, including this year's basketball championship, the NHL hockey conference finals, Major League Baseball, and, of course, all the latest fighting news in MMA, UFC, and boxing. Uh, BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions over at BetOnline.net, where the game starts. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so uh, final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I talked about how I was gone on vacation, and I was down in Destin, and um, it was a great time. Like, I had so much fun, and I had so much fun just, you know, getting away from it all and hanging out with friends and just being on the beach, and the weather was perfect and all that. Uh, but something happened over the weekend or over the week I was gone, uh, especially via social media with a lot of people, uh, of mainly two particular media members just in sports radio kind of losing it. Um, and, and one in particular about the comments uh, towards Michael Turner. And, I, you know, I don't want to give too much credit where it's not due because you know, a lot of these guys just want that. They just want their name out there and, and all that. So. And I, I really battled on whether or not to even discuss this, but uh, a few of you have reached out to me or, you know, showed me things and was just like, oh man, you know, what do you, what do you make of this being someone who's in sports talk radio and in podcasting and, um, you know, my theory behind everything and how I approach it. And, you know, I'm not saying I know how to do it all because I don't, I don't know how to, you know, what's the perfect podcast, what's the perfect radio show. I don't think there is a perfect way of doing it. And everybody has their own style. And that's what's kind of fun about radio and podcasting is that you can have people talking about the same thing, same content, but approaching it in different ways. 
you know, some people like to go crazy and go, you know, all hater mode on people. Some people like to look at the positive, ever optimist viewpoint. Some people like to be in the middle. It, it's whatever. Like I, I have my own approach on how I look at players and, and sports and, uh, you know, entertainment and, you know, the thoughts and everything that come along with it. I, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not saying I do it right. I'm not saying I do it wrong. I do it my way and my way either works or it don't. Like that's something I've always taken pride in when it comes to how I've been able to do what I do and be in the position I'm at because I'm very blessed to do it. But I've always felt like uh, I want to do it at the end my way. Sounds cliche. Sounds like a Frank Sinatra song because it is. But if, if I succeed, I want it to be because of me. And if I fail, I want it to be because of me because that's the best learning experiences that we can have in life. And so everyone's different. Everyone goes about it in different ways. And you know, I was, I was, I heard the clip and I've heard, you know, what was said about Michael Turner and I was just in shock. It's like, man, that was really intense, <laughs> really over the top. And again, people can sit here and say, oh, there's no place for that. And, and which, you know, okay, that's fine. Like say what you want. And they can say that, you know, that was way out of line. And yeah, it was, it was completely and totally out of line, like way over the top out of line. But you know, when it, when it comes to me and, and how I handle things, because I also had people, some people coming at me over the weekend is over the week as well about stupid stuff that I don't I don't even know. But my, my point is this, folks. If you listen to this podcast, if you watch this podcast, if you listen to my radio show, I mean, whatever it is. That's your decision. <laughs> like, if you want this, if you want me, you can have me. And then this is how it's going to be. But if you don't like me, if you don't want to listen to me or watch me or whatever, that's fine too. Like you don't have to, you can do it every way you want to do it, but I'm not going to change who I am on this podcast or on my radio show just because I'm trying to go for some like shock value. Like I'm, I'm not really trying to do that. I'm trying to talk to you in the way that I would talk to my friends, like in close quarters. You know, I, I try to have the opinions and portray the same opinions about things that I would with anybody else, not on the radio, not on this podcast. And that's how I'm always going to do it. And that's one of the things that I wish more people would understand in, in this business. And, and what we do is that um, there's always certain lines that you can be crossed. I always appreciate and applaud the people that attempt to do new things and try new things. But at the end of the day, you know, it's up to you. It's up to you, to the audience. If you if you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. And I've been blessed with each and every one of you that do like me and to watch me and listen to me. And I have fun doing it. But, you know, there's some people out there that um, feel like it's about like they is whether it's they're threatened by others or whether they're just angry about something, whatever it may be. They're so wrapped up in what other people do. I just care about what I'm doing because at the end of the day, that's all that matters to me. There's other podcasts out there that talk Razorbacks. I don't, I don't care about them. Like it's, if they, if they get more listens to me, okay, that's fine. You get more subscribers. Okay. That's fine too. But that's the way it is. That's the way the business is. And that's the way it goes. But certain things you just can't do. And I'm always going to try to be real with people. I'm always going to try to voice my opinion in the way that I, always have and I always will but also try to do it tastefully and respect respectfully and not try to just tear anybody down it's not my mo I like to talk trash that's not my mo but anyways I appreciate the support all of you have given me and all you continue to give me it's awesome and I love it and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it and thank you so much for for making this possible and and to being a part of my life just like I'm a part of your life every single day here on the podcast so I don't know. Let's keep having fun. Let's not worry about the other stuff. All right. Just keep having some fun. That's what this is all about. Appreciate everybody listening into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. And also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.